Hello loves! Once again, I am Silent3 and this is my kitchen. Uh, we're doing something a little different today and I will explain. Today we are making fried spaghetti and you're gonna come along. So, it's a pretty easy recipe. All we need, some bacon, some cheese, some condensed tomato soup, and some spaghetti. Pre so, we'll start with the spaghetti. You can do it with just the regular long spaghetti if you'd like. That's in fact kind of what I would recommend because it is easier. However, Steel doesn't like long spaghettis. He prefers them broken up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and break them up. And I have a magic trick to show you. So, observe. Long spaghettis. Mm -hmm. Bear with me here. Are you ready? And voila! I know! It's magic! How does she do it? Well, while I love sharing with you my kitchen secrets, unfortunately Magician's Code says that I can't actually share this. So, I already got the water started. It takes a while to boil, so I recommend you get started on that first. And also, because we're going to be frying up the bacon, get started heating up your, uh, your frying pan for that too. I like using cast iron because cast iron is amazing and I also have a fancy pants little uh, pasta thing that I use for that. So once that gets boiling then we'll throw the spaghetti in and uh, have some fun. In the meantime, while that gets going, let's get going on the bacon too. So. So, we're going to need to cut this up. As I said, it, uh, it doesn't matter how much you use. Now let's get going cutting the bacon. Like I said, it doesn't, how much, it doesn't matter how much you use. I'm gonna go ahead and use the full pound. I've already got it uh, set up over here. Please don't actually send nudes. That's just for the Reddit karma. Alright, so we've got our bacon chopped up into nice bite-sized pieces. Uh, I'm actually frying it in two batches to avoid overcrowding the pan. Very important. Uh, also, sorry for not actually showing you cutting up the bacon. I used a knife. I didn't use any special techniques. But, I did use two hands to do it, which makes it difficult to hold the camera. And also, I don't want to get bacon all over my camera. We already have the pasta going, it's boiling away. Just cook it according to the regular directions on the packaging. Um, I'm at high altitude, so I'll be cooking it a little bit longer because, you know, that's what you do. Remember to stir it occasionally. Um, obviously this will keep your pasta from sticking to the bottom and it will nice, it'll keep it much more uh, evenly cooked and things like that. So, yeah, go ahead and let that do its thing. We're frying our bacon. One thing I like about the uh, the cast iron pan is I get to use a fancy metal spatula. And I can just get in there and just scrape away at the bottom and not have to worry about, oh no, my Teflon coating! So, uh, yeah. We'll go ahead and keep on doing this. It's not very exciting. I don't know, maybe some people actually do just like watching bacon cook. Uh, so, you know, in case you're curious as to why I'm doing this, last year, Bill Zarvarala and I did Extra Life, and I made fried spaghetti for lunch, dinner, or something, I don't remember. But we ate it, and Varala really enjoyed it. So, she wanted to know how it was made. The plan was I was going to make it during this year's Extra Life stream, but Bill's mom was awesome, and she kept bringing us food throughout the whole thing, so we didn't actually need to make the fried spaghetti. But we already had the ingredients over there, so now she's just going to have to make it. And it'll be great. And, like, in order to do that, she kind of has to know how. So, here we are. This is what we're doing. Okay, so our pasta is done. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw on my fancy little lid here. Sorry if that was super loud. I'm going to turn on the water over here. Always turn on the water when you're about to drown or drain drain some pasta. Probably if you're about to drown something too. But if you're about to drain some pasta, 
It's always a good thing. Sorry, this is going to be super awkward. <laughs> this is what life looks like if you're a pasta. Always turn the water on so uh, you don't like scorch your pipes or something. And having the water on helps cool the water. Oh, look, a really small blend. That's pretty cool. Okay. So drain your pasta. Nice and easy. And I don't know if you noticed, but I turned down the heat on the stove. Because we're going to put this pot right back on there. Put it up. Give it a little shake. There's my living room, guys. It's a mess. Nope, nothing else in there? Okay, good. So we turn off the water. We come back over here. There we go. All right. See, this is why I like this pasta pan. Okay, so next step is we're going to break open our, uh, our soup, which I might be able to do one-handed, which I can do one-handed, like a boss. We're also going to grab, here's my mess of a silver door. See, you're learning so much about me. All right, I promised I was going to open these one-handed, and I kind of got far on one of them, but then my camera ran out of memory, so I wasn't able to do any more. So now all we're going to do is just take our little soups and dump it into our, uh, our pasta thing here. Pretty simple. Mmm, doesn't it look delicious? Mm -hmm. Now I find that uh, two per one pound of pasta and and bacon is a pretty good, it's a, it's a pretty good ratio. But, I mean, play with it. Like, everybody's preferences are different, so maybe you'll like something uh, different. Let's see how many times I can say different in like a 12 second span. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna set the camera down while I finish this. Um, fun fact, this is a dish that my great-grandmother used to make. Great-grandmother? Yeah, great-grandmother. And it was the kind of thing that they made during the Depression when a lot of food items were scarce. So, uh, like my dad points out, you may not even have to go to the store in order to get the bacon because you can just go straight to the farm and trade. So, uh, yeah. Go ahead and do that. Trade for the bacon. Speaking of bacon, oh my god, it looks amazing, guys. Okay. Wash my hands again. It's very important to wash your hands often while cooking. My fingers are kind of pruny at this point. And I like to use paper towels to dry them because uh, it's, it's like less germy or something. All right, so now that we have that done, we are going to take our first batch of bacon here. You wanna see it? Mmm, bacon. It's a bit more crisp than I usually like it, but again, Steve likes it crisp. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna dump all of it just right in. Grab this, get some of the bacon grease off the bottom. No sizzles, score. Get rid of that. We'll dump in the rest of the bacon. And then we'll wash our hands again. See, I told you, like, so many times throughout the course of this. You, you haven't even been here for most of them, but trust me, they've been happening. Okay. So here's what we're looking like right now, and that's because I haven't stirred it at all. I'm going to finish putting the rest of this in here using my tiny little spatula. I love tiny spatulas. Is that a weird thing? Probably. Use our tiny spatula to get the rest of this in here. And we are looking pretty good so far. Always be sure to get rid of your cans in a timely manner, otherwise the cats will jump on the counter and lick them clean, and I always worry that they're going to cut their little tongues. 
Also, they aren't supposed to be on the counter. The cats, not the cans. Or specifically the little tongues. Man, that sentence just... Sorry I left my modifiers dangling so much. All right. So give that a good stir. Remember, this is still only half the bacon that you see in here. That's what we look like so far. It's kind of a nice little color. I like that. We have our second round of bacon started. Which is good. So, we'll get going on that. And then while we do that, we'll get started with the cheese. All right, we're down here now. We are unwrapping our little cheeses. I love cheese. I really do. And I like good cheese. These are just like American singles. Like the kind you'd see on a dating site, you know? Don't acknowledge that one. Uh, this is not what I would call good cheese. However, I have tried making fried spaghetti with a higher quality, like, like cheddar or something like that. It's not the same. Again, this is your preference, so you should do whatever you would like to do when you make your own at home, because I know you're going to. Tweet me pictures, guys. Um, so, so if you make your own fried spaghetti at home, you use whatever kind of cheese you like. You can use however much you like. Now, myself, as much as I like cheese, like, originally, when I was reminded how to make this recipe, uh, I was told to use 12 slices of American cheese. And I thought, man, cheese is delicious. We should use more than 12 slices. I tried it with 16. Maybe more cheese is a good thing when you have good cheese, but as I said, this is not good cheese. It just didn't taste the same, which, I, I mean, it seems obvious now when saying that, but it didn't taste as good is, is what I'm really getting at here. Uh, so when I make it, I always stick to just 12 slices because that is, in my opinion, the perfect amount of cheese for fried spaghetti. <laughs> now, all I'm doing right now, obviously, is just taking it out of the little wrapper thing and using my, uh, my paper towel here. Now what I'm going to do, and I probably don't have to do this part, but I like just folding it in quarters like this so it melts a little bit easier when we end up throwing it into the pot. I really don't think we have to do it, but I don't know. I guess I'm weird like that. And then I just throw it in. I don't know if you can see that from here. What I really need to do is get myself a tripod. So if you guys like this video format and uh, you want me to do some more, I certainly don't mind doing more. I'm actually having quite a bit of fun doing this. But if I do end up doing more, I am going to invest in a tripod because, uh, like, Right now, my tripod is a couple of Boston cream rolls. Yeah. Pretty high quality there, I know. Um, so yeah, we have that going. Let's give our bacon a stir while we're here. And I touched my camera, so give me a sec. All right, and I'm back. Freshly washed. I told you, I wash my hands a lot when I'm cooking. So now we're going back, using all 12 slices of cheese. And just folding them to break them. So then we can peel them apart later. I'll get you another shot of that, just in case that first one was a really bad shot. Which I wouldn't be surprised if it is, considering my incredible tripod there. Oh, also, I wonder if that's blocking everything. And now, this has been Amateur Hour Cooking with Silent 3. Okay, so we have our cheese piles. I like mixing it in a little at a time to, uh, to help, I don't know, make it cook more evenly or something. I don't know I'm making this up.
I really don't think that light helps all that much. Okay, good. I was mad at myself for a second for not being like, oh my god, there's this light here and I haven't been using any of it, or I haven't been using it at all. Oh yeah, this is going to be a nice close-up as we stir. Also, keep your elbow away from the cast iron pan because that gets really freaking hot. Oh, it's steaming again. Okay. So, we are just chugging away, plugging along with our little cheeses here. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would help with those shadows. Yeah, okay, fine, we'll go with it. So, just throwing all this in, letting it melt a little bit, and then we give it a stir. Clearly, it's very important where these pieces go. Um, yeah, so we're going to let that go for a little bit longer. Trying to give this another stir. Bacon's looking good. I can show you that. Sorry, here I am over here doing this, and you just don't get to see any of it. Any of the fun bits. Okay. Now, at this part, I mean, not necessarily immediately after you throw in the cheese. Like I said, I do like to usually let it sit for a little bit longer. It's important to stir often because this part especially, even more so than when the pasta is boiling, it, uh, it likes to stick to the bottom of the pan. So uh, just be sure you keep an eye on that and stir frequently and uh, preferably with two hands because honestly this doesn't seem to be doing as much good as I would like. All right, guys, we're coming up on the home stretch here. We have our final cheese pile in here. Bacon is almost ready. It's almost time to throw the bacon in here, give it another good stir. Uh, it seems to be nice and toasty warm, so I don't think we have to uh, let it sit here for a while again to um, to let it like heat thoroughly and all that. So that's a good thing. And as we come to the close to the end of our video, I would like to take a moment to thank you for watching, of course. Uh, I'm not going to be that guy, you know, the one that tells you, like, comment, and subscribe! Except for right then. I did it just then. But if you don't care either way, then I'm not going to do them. Well, I mean, like, if you specifically don't care either way, uh, but other people do, then I'll still do them. But, like, if nobody cares, then I'm not going to bother. But if... Even one person does, such as Varela, then uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and keep doing these. I don't mind at all. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, if you were there for our extra life that happened on the 15th when we were originally going to do this, only it was going to be live on stream, uh, if you were there for that stream, then thank you for tuning in. If you weren't, that's okay. You can still catch us this year, in fact. A week from when I am recording this. It is Thursday. So, on the 29th at about 7.30, 7, 7.30 Eastern Time, uh, we are going to have another small section of stream to do the Twitch Plays RPGs that we had talked about doing. So what it's going to be, uh, Bilzar is going to run a short session, and who do we have? We have Random... Draco, Dice, and me. And we are all going to be characters in this RPG. The the twist is while while uh, Random Draco and that crew, while they are all going to be their own characters, my character is going to be played by Twitch. That's right. Chat is going to tell me what my character does in this campaign. This is hard to do one-handed. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. That was really hard. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have kind of a, a Twitch Plays RPGs, and we would love to have you there. Because the more people we have telling me what to do in this particular setting, then the better it's going to be. So. Like I said, it will be about uh, 7 o'clock Thursday, December 29th. And I will have all kinds of links and stuff in the description. So, thank you for watching. We are pretty much done here. This is what it's supposed to look like. Uh, I hope you enjoy your first spaghetti. Because I know I'm going to. So, thanks for watching. 
Hope to see you on Thursday. And until next time, take care. Goodbye, loves.